So day one, we've arrived at Mike's gym in Mabaya for the weekend workshop and everyone has finally got here. We're going to do some movement work and some movement prep work, get the journey out of the system. Everyone's flown in from all over Europe and said so we've come up to the temple to, uh, to start to prep the body for the weekend ahead. Handstanding off the back of two shoulder reconstructions. I used to dislocate overhead positions really easily. Um, and, the, and the impossible for me was actually can I learn to handstand? Um, and it's gone all right so far, but I still think I've got room to develop. But um, yeah, there's so much that I've learned along the way about having that confidence in my shoulders, so it's been really beneficial from that side of things, but also how we understand the, the process of teaching the body to do something new, or more importantly, teaching the brain to do something new at mid thirties or whatever. And um, then on that, the, the handstand out of <laughs> the handstand out of everything we're gonna do, like Tim said, like take compare it to a muscle up. There's some there's some there's a skill element of the technique when someone has just that hasn't got the technique that they're strong enough and we can you can teach them that bit because it's such a small part very quickly. So if someone's often we do a workshop if ten people come and there's three people that are strong enough, we can teach them in five minutes to do a muscle up sometimes. Not every time, but sometimes. Whereas with a handstand, you be strong enough, oh, we just need the skill, but the skill element's like 95% of it. Um, learning to, when we all learn to, we, none of us can remember learning to walk on our, uh, on our feet, because we were too young. But it was a process that took quite a while. And I say, it's a, Tim's got a little boy, and I say, when you see someone, I haven't got any kids, but when you see, you see a parent and their kids started walking, and they're like, oh, the little, little Johnny, oh, well, Jack's is, He's, he, he can walk now, and if you were to critically evaluate his walking, you'd go, his walking's pretty crap. <laughs> <laughs> but, but he's walking, and the same then, so it's an evolutionary process to then become actually good. Staying, like, like on your bike, staying still is much harder than moving, and so when we start to learn on our hands, it's like that, but if you're like, we are, we're mid-30s and above, or whatever, that we're learning that new skill, and we have, we've got to give ourselves the chance to get used to using these, like them, and that feels dead weird at the start. And the first time you hold your handstand, it's a few of us talking about, I always say one second when you're learning upside down feels like forever. You're like, I nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> By the time it turns around and falling over, that was, that's what it was like at the start. And, and then you, and you're dead happy, and then, you, and then someone shows you a photo of it, and your alignment's all funny, but you're still happy because you're like, I actually, I felt it, I did it. And then the evolution process is to get longer and then better with your alignment. The things about your alignment are, as you get your alignment better, it becomes easier to a degree, but it becomes also, it becomes more efficient rather than sort of energy sapping when you're, when you're up there. Yeah, for me to hold a handstand, it's not hard from a strength perspective. It's just balance. The long, I, what the hard bit is, is keeping the right alignment so I'm stacked up. But I can, because I'm there, I'm locked out. Yeah. So, so when I can hold it, so it's not strength. It's just trying to get into position, but it's, it's the fine motor adjustments and learning where your control strategies are going to come from. And the interesting thing about, and we're doing, as I said yesterday, we're doing quite a bit of learning at the moment around motor control. But it's just, if you look at it from a basic perspective, do you know what your control strategies are and how quickly can you activate them? So, I'm going to give you some of this because I want to start talking about it more. Imagine you've got a tray with a load of marbles on it. If we've got, if that tray is completely flat, this is your skill acquisition process, if that tray is completely flat and that tray moves, those marbles are going all over the place. You can't control it and that's movement. So if you're a brand new handstander and I'm gonna go out there and learn to handstand, I'm gonna kick off, you've got a tray of marbles and you've got no idea which one, or you can't control any of them, they're going all over the place. What we wanna try and do through, from a learning perspective is make little wells in that tray. We wanna make little holes. So we start, then mar marbles can sit into those little wells. So that becomes a stable part of the movement. As you start to rock the tray, those marbles are actually going to stay in their holes. Those are called attractors. The fluctuators are the marbles we want to move a little bit. Because if we only ever had attractors, deep wells, and everything was fixed, but well, we've got no adjustment in that environment. So if I want to come and handstand on here, or want to go on the wall, or want to go on the beach tomorrow, I need fluctuation in my motor skill to be able to adapt to the environment that I'm moving in. That's a human process of actually, I just want to survive because I might need to run up that hill and I might be on dirt versus concrete. 
we're just taking the same motor control and learning process and putting it into a hand balancing exercise because it's fun. We don't need to stand on our hands as humans, it's just cool. So what, we, what we're going to try and do through the teaching process is help you guys to understand what those attractor sites are, so you make wells. So when I get into a stable position, to start off with, this is an attractor for me. And my next, let's take it as another one, is I need to have the fluctuators to be able to move into my next attractor and then I can stabilize that shape. So from here, I'm going to move through. That's a stable shape for me. I can hold that pretty comfortably. When I come through to the top, my stable shape is here locked out, but my attractors the whole time are fingers, shoulders, midsection, feet. Those are the things which are moving to control me in the environment. We went and did some filming for Canterbury a while ago and I couldn't do a handstand particularly well, but the wind was blowing me. It was quite a windy day and all of a sudden my handstand was knocked out. I'm like, okay, I need some more robustness. Whereas yesterday I was doing a handstand and Jacko was kicking me, <laughs> kind of knocked me over, but I'm, I'm able to make the adjustments. Does that make sense? So just think about the stable parts of the movement, we need those and we're going to teach you some of those today and look at improving them. But we also need to understand to learn those control strategies. And the real fine motor control comes when you subconsciously can fire the right movement pattern at the same time because you're, you're so clued up that you'll sense the movement changing and you'll correct it. Sense the movement changing, boom, I'm going to correct it. And to start off with, you're just too slow. You just can't do it quick enough. And that's the hard thing, you lose your balance, your feet back on the floor. Okay, I didn't do it. So when George, when you say like it works sometimes, you're probably just in a point where your brain's cleared up, you're feeling pretty fresh, you nail it, you tray, he's like, ah, boom, I've got it right. And all of a sudden the next day, those marbles are back all over the place. Just need some more wells. I enjoyed that. And um it's <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> and I, on on top of those things, we've got to add in that we might be like I was scared yesterday of heights. Some of us, as, as adults, it can be easy for us to get scared when we're upside down. Um, all of that skill acquisition is made difficult because we are upside down, we're just not used to that. Um, every other movement, every other bit of training we do, generally you're either upright or human flag with sideways, but you don't, you don't lie sideways cause you, and, and get confused because you lie sideways in your bed, potentially. Um, so we've got that to sort of add on the top of it and you only get more used to being upside down by spending more time upside down. Um, so getting used to being upside down, comfortable being upside down and then starting to have that body awareness of when you're upside down, when you're trying to sort out those marbles in that tray, at times when your feet are going over the top, your brain is a bit confused and it thinks they need to go backwards. It's like, so you, have you ever done a session with a partner trying to give you some instructions and like, no, no, go back or go forward or, or swing. <laughs> but they're, say, they're, they're saying to you that your feet are going like towards the wall, but bring them back away from the wall and all you do is you take them more towards the wall because we've just got that disorientation and that, that just, we just need to factor that in. Um, and then the final thing I want to say before we start was um, when, we're in the, when, we're upside, when we are upside down, we'll talk a bit about and we'll go into an alignment and the movement part of part of that and the importance of that and, and Greg mentioned just then about his shoulders that if we can't create that good overhead position because we're tight then it's going to be you're fighting a bit of a losing battle in terms of your alignment um, but the other thing will be the brain's not stupid it knows the easiest way to do something it knows what's most comfortable and it knows that here is more unstable and more difficult to get end range. Remember we talked yesterday in the morning about uh, when we did the movement session that mid range is strongest so your body wants to go here because he's like, bench press much stronger than overhead press and it, it knows that here is, here is more comfortable, here is less scary, but for you to then get your feet above your head, we then have to then go into that shape to make that alignment. But you've got then this big curve through the back. Add on top of that, that those of us who walk on the balance beam, did anyone walk on the balance beam yesterday like that? No, you, you put your hands out instinctively because you know a bit of counterbalance either side helps my balance. Well, that shape, if you take where the midline is, this is one side, this is the other. So you're almost, your brain wants to do that shape to try and do this for you. But we're trying to do the opposite. So sometimes we might not have that alignment and we go, oh, my shoulders must be tight. And we can test you and your shoulders might be absolutely fine. It's more that your brain is going into that. Let's make the balance easier. And also let's get more comfortable in a more stable position rather than there is more difficult. And I think really my, I just want you to, under, just to understand all the different things that might go on when we're doing this. 
And the, the big, big, big take home from me is a really soft thing of don't be hard on yourself when we're learning at the start. As long as it's safe and you're not going to hurt, you're not, you know, you're not doing something that's going to injure yourself and you're aware of what you're doing, then, we, then you can constantly improve that. If you don't know that the shape you're in isn't where you want to be, then it's hard for you to then change it because you don't know. So things like when you're training handstands away from here, videoing yourself so you can see what you like. You don't have to post it on social media and say, look at me. It can be your own feedback for how you're getting on. All right, Let's start. any questions before we start? Let's get into it. You're gonna find a bit of space on the wall, feet against the wall, bum against here. Try not to push it too far back. And then all we're gonna do, head against the wall. If your ponytail's in the way like me, then just deal with it. Get and then midsection, yeah. midsection tight. And we're gonna see what we like, what we like in terms of getting our Getting up to the wall, arms straight, so we have elbows bent. Is it easy? Is it tight? Or to get there, do you end up popping that rib cage up? Do we bend our elbows? So just have a bit of a feel, and then we're going to do this prep work and then see what that feels like afterwards. Yeah? Cool. Just a, there's a bit, guys, for, for the session. Uh, we talk about being present in your Sorry. practice, so just dial into how you feel like you're moving. Just be aware of what your body's doing. It's not wrong or right at this stage, it's just be conscious of what's happening. And that's going to help us to learn how to make these adjustments and corrections. All right, we're going to get into some frog stamp positions. So what I want you guys to have is to start off is go back into that deep spot from yesterday. And then that feels like... I thought it was too much of a yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then... Sometimes we find yeah, people yeah, struggle with frog stand and you haven't got to actually get into a nice shape here to be able to lift. So if we're kind of up, we can't get down, it becomes quite difficult. So just spending time, even though it's a handstand, just get the hips kind of sorted, just give it a little sway from side to side. Sit up, lean forwards, just coming through, just start to kind of ease into the There's a space in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's throw hands over head, just go again, sit into oh, that man, position. This is, this is when we feel tightness in the thoracic spine, that T-spine position. Okay, you can bring it down. Alright, good. Okay, so just sit into that shape for a minute as well. Please. If you want to, hands out front, you can do it, it's no problem. Good. Alright, let's drop into a push-up position. So start just flat shape. We're going to do a little bit of work um, into the shoulders first. Just hold that position to start off with. Just think about squeezing the shoulders around the outside like Jacko talked about yesterday. So push the shoulders up, drop back down, push them up. Feel the scap slide around the rib cage. Keep your tummy on the bum on. We'll come back to this in a minute. Let's do a set of like seven, six or eight. As we talked about yesterday, we want that scap to be moving around the rib cage. To keep contact with the shoulder or the humerus, we go overhead. Good. All right. Okay, a bit of yoga. We're gonna do what Jen's doing. We're gonna just try and find that top position. So, what you guys to go push-up position. Just stick your bum to the sky and just drop into that end position. So, try and get the hands up overhead. Just see us rest slides a bit. Bump nice and tall. Find that end range. Then pop back through. You don't want to really like on this, um, you might struggle with wall space, but I'll just show you can have a go there. I'll some free time in a second. Is if I. I'm just going to go in this corner so you guys can see. <coughs> if I go hands up on the wall and then drop into a position and then start thinking about what my spine is doing in this shape. So rather than just let it arch up, which is where the go-to is going to be, if you think what Jacko said before, if I allow the shoulders to go up and I'm popping the ribcage to get the range, try and tuck your bum up underneath. We're going to talk about hollow body movements in a bit. This, this rock position to try and get tension. So we want to be able to make that shape with the shoulders up overhead. So from position, hands on the wall, I'm going to sit in rather than going here, tuck underneath and then sit into that press position. Just hold that. So, and do, do, you figure out, are you in a decent position? So Tim is, if he lets it drop, he can feel how much deeper he goes. The idea is, we're trying to make it come from up here, rather than down here. 
Yeah, so if you let it come from down there, that's you. Rib cage popping up, lower back cranked on. Find a bit of a wall space, so we go. Yeah. Have a, just have a feel in and out of it. That, so keep that, and yeah. it's going to come from here. So yeah, you're yeah, nice. Good. Yeah. No, that is it. So you know, it's just this part. There. Yeah. Then get this. Yeah. Keep this part, and then take that down. Good. Yeah. Then so stay there. Stay there. Yeah. If you let this go, yeah, let this come down as well, go that way. Oh, Look how much lower you can go, but that's just because you've moved your pelvis. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This is a little bit of going back to the idea that we um, give yourself full range of movement and then choose which you want to use. Good, come back in. Just touching on um, some of the conversations we had about mobility yesterday. Um, <coughs> the body and the spine can create this position, can create flexion. It can also create extension. Neither of those positions is wrong. It's just on how we choose to use them. But we meet so many people that are just glued up. And we say to them, like, if you, even like the yoga, the cat, cow, cat, camel, cat, cat, cow? Cat, cow. Cat, cow. I like it that I don't know yoga terms. <laughs> um, like that spinal or the pelvis um, tilting, we should be able to get into that shape, but somebody just can't feel it. And we should be able to get into that position. So having that option is great because now you can choose where you want to stabilize that. And it goes back to that strength through range. We get so tight in the lats, and this is one of the big players that causes some problems for us. It is such a big muscle. It comes from, uh, it's the only muscle which joins the shoulder girdle with the pelvis. So it starts at the top here, or the top of the pelvis here. We've got a load of fascial tissue in the mid back. And it comes up and it spans, so it starts from about here, this is all fascial tissue, it drives, comes all the way up through here, it has an attachment point on the, on the scalp, it comes and dives up underneath and it attaches onto the front of the, bar, of the bicep or the front of the humerus here. So in its shortest position, what it wants to do is put you in handcuffs. So you're winding the shoulder in, it arches the back. We can get super lat dominant just because we spend a lot of time in short positions, but also this lat, if we're unstable around the shoulder, lat's like, Jack out, I got you. Boom, and it's down, it's cranking the whole shoulder, it's so powerful. So if we now have got a short, tight, overactive lap, when I want to go here, brain says, no worries, I got you, I'll find you some more range. Okay, the lat isn't changed, but all it's done is it's gone. I'm now using that. More difficult to come the other way. So again, just understand a bit, it's some extra knowledge, but just, if we feel like we're struggling to get the hands overhead, and we get this arch position, okay, you need some more lap length, all right? So, those little stretches do that. They start to get us in some better positions, spending some time there. But it's exactly That's why on that one, yeah, exactly why on that one, when you, when you let the arch in the back, you just put in the lat in a shorter position, so you go, ooh, that feels easier. Yeah, and it's the difference between knowing, like feet, like Tim said, right at the beginning, feeling, like being able to be aware of our body positions and how one joint, particularly the hip, how it will affect the shoulder. Yeah, and then your rib cage is going to be part of that. So if, if you like, I came up um, just with you. Yeah, and we. Um, and he was still there. Hey, my pronunciation is. I don't want to. Do, I'm just going to butcher it. But you were there, and I, I went up to him and I was like showing him my flared rib cage, going. It was like my polite way of going. You're also flaring your your rib cage, and, and then you were like, and then and then we pulled it down. And you went, oh, really? And then I was like, and your elbows then need to be straight. And you're like, whoa! And it was like these three things: rib cage down. Shoulder through, elbow straight. Three things together, and the brain starts to go, doing those three things is quite difficult. And we're not upside down yet. Yeah? So I'll be looking for a couple of minutes stretch, just hold that into that position, mobilise the joints to feel it, and then talk about what we did, or go back to what we talked about yesterday. Now we need to get some strength in that end position. So I want you guys to drop into a wide position. So we're going to squeeze on time and talk about core in a minute. So we'll try and crack a worn up between your bum cheeks. So lock the bum on. Tummy button pull it nice and tight. So squeeze tummy button up. So what we're not going to allow ourselves to do is arch. Chin down. And then we're now going to work this end range. Generally people are very weak in this position because it's our end range strength. And we're going to hold our hands down. We need some strength and some control here in the shoulders. So we're always going to have the head down. We're just going to lift the shoulders off, squeezing the palm point between the shoulder blades, and then back down. So we're just going to go for a wide raise. So up, squeeze hard at the top, three seconds, back down. Good. Up, three seconds, back down. Do 10 reps, but just feel that, um, that contraction 10 times, and just hold for three seconds each time. And just feel that position. I don't know, chin down, chest on the floor, the ground. So the moment you do a skydive, 
Uh, the ones that flat, not arched, so head down, head down, don't arch your back. Go on, Greg, a bit more. Mm. You're strong in here, that's better. Arms straight, come on, big lad. Good. When you, get, nice. when you reach, when you hold those three seconds at the top, that isometric hold at the top, yeah, let's try to ask yeah, yourself that question. Jacko, can I get a little yeah, bit more, but not through the back? Laura. Chest down, Laura. Key chest on the floor. Just think we're kids down. So let you come down with this floor, and then, they, and then it comes in the shoulder. Whereas if you can come higher, yeah, that's because this is moving. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think you're right. Oh, not yeah. just. Yeah, that's right. I mean, not just. Um, oh. <laughs> Okay, good. Like a lot of times, think it's just what saying. Yeah. Whatever it is. That's the end of it. I've taught to athletes a lot over the years and used the idea that range of movement is the cornerstone of performance. If I have range of movement, I have options. As soon as I don't have range of movement, the brain is going to have to compensate. So if I want to make beautiful movement, whether that's a sprinter, a swimmer, a hockey player, it doesn't matter, we're all the same, we have the same bodies that move in largely the same way. If we create range of movement, we can do whatever we want with it. As soon as we lose it, the brain goes into compensation mode, and then we start to find that we have to make adaptations. So for those of you guys that are finding it difficult to get into that end range, think about what that's going to look like when you get into a handstand. Straight away, without even thinking, so prioritise that. It's the bit where it's kind of like, I want a handstand, I don't want to do loads of stretches, it's boring. Okay, think about the process. We use the phrase a lot, earn the right to progress. If you want to earn the right to have a beautiful handstand, you have to earn the right to progress through the stage of putting the foundations in place. And just change your mindset, don't think of stretching as stretching poor, and just go, I'm doing this current thing I'm doing. It's going to help my, it's for my handstand. I'm handstand training, but I'm just working on. The ultimately, like if we go, if we finish our prep work, go back to that. To, like I've done less than you guys, and I was woke up this morning and felt a bit flipping all junked up. But oh, that feels pretty nice to me now, and I've done half of the stuff you've done. Yeah, on the okay. Shots <laughs> <laughs> <Jobs> on. How's it going? Not bad last night. On my back. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about core. And then we're going to bring it back all and link it all in together. So, come here, Rip. I'm still lying in here. I'm back to people just lying. Okay, so. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> we all know you've got a six pack jacko. Core. Cool. Yeah. Alright, so what I want to do is start thinking about this midsection and how it links in with the rest of the body. So, if we're allowing that rib case to flare, what I can do is get my hand all the way under here. It's the same principle of what's happening in this shape. So to get the handstand locked down, and gymnastics talk about this a lot, hollow body shape. So Jack is going to squeeze and flatten that back against the ground. You can see the rib cage now starts to close in. I'm going when Jacko first started training with me, like he got all of his stuff, <laughs> like this turtle that he ate at age five. <laughs> Still living in there. So, but underneath that is flipping marshmallow, and it was piss weak, and he couldn't do this exercise despite having all this on the outside. And so now I can. And now you can. Because from the age of about 12 to 18, every night and every morning, I used to do this and these. Like at least 100 to 200 every night, and that caused a problem. Because <laughs> you just get good at what you've got, so I just think I'm really good at doing that, but not using it effectively. But it's a bit underneath which is going to hold this shape together. So, gymnastics will talk about a hollow body. So, he flattens this down, ribcage closes in. We're trying to make this flat line, so then he can try and make a dish position underneath. So, he's now going to try and lift his hands and his feet off the floor slightly to try and create this tuck position. And yeah, you can see if you tilt the pelvis up underneath So it. not just that down, but also a little bit that down and that Arms Arm straight, so we create this lift position. We're going to just progress into this. Basically, if we were to flip them upside down, and we'll show you a demonstration of this in a minute, that's the shape we pretty much want to be in. It's a strong, stable position for us. So we can build this up. So we're going to go dead bug to start off with. This is just like our dead cockroach position. So we can go one arm, one leg. Your whole job the whole time is to keep that flat on the ground. So you keep squashing the hand down. If for level one is leg and arm, we're just taking weight away from the midsection. If you find at any point that your rib cage wants to flare and pop up, you're going to work harder to crank it down or decrease the range of movement that you want to work through. Level two is to take both of them 
and we're now taking more weight away, so we're getting into this kind of long straight position. The third level I want you guys to play around with is to now try and create the hollow body rock position. So you can create that hollow body lift, you'll feel it, and now you want to be a little like side plate holding that shape. You can see the key thing here is the hips every single time come off the floor and the distance between the hands and the feet doesn't change. If he gets it wrong, he's going to look like a salmon just flapping on the riverbank. Yeah. This distance is all over the place, he's not getting his bum up off the floor. And that all comes, the, the, the bum lift comes from your lower abdominals of being able to hold that shape and pull with the hips off the ground. All right, have a play with what? that. Yeah, one thing, a little, little bugbear of mine on, the third, on level one, one thing will be your coordination of opposites, a little bit of, and what the other thing will do, I'm gonna move um, my right hand and my left leg, yeah? The other side doesn't move at all. Whereas what will happen a lot of the time, we can say why, we'll do this. That is helping support the pelvis, so my core is not having to work. And then this one, I'm taking that lever and taking it right into the centre line. To make, that is 10 times easier than if you actually keep this straight and this straight. Yeah, and ideally you could even progress that by having the leg you're not moving slightly further away until you're trying to fight that happening. Yeah. Let's have a go. Okay, when you found that tuck position, guys, that hollow body, have a quick rest and then take yourself back into the hollow body. You have to do a little bit of a, a movement to try and get yourself going, but then just try and get a rock. We will put down Good. 20 well controlled hollow rocks as our baseline for core stability. Good. So you're always going to go onto your shoulders, guys, you pull your bum off the ground. Good. Nice, Andy. I can see. Yeah. yeah. It's quite, we go to quite a lot of time to explain some of these basic foundations because it's going to build everything we're going to stack it onto. We could just have gone straight away. Let's just kick up into a handstand. We haven't given you the tools to be successful in that shape. Really. This is hopefully going to start to link it all together. And the nice thing about when we go human flags, everything we just did is the same. So human flags, handstand on the side. The, the force is working a different, but it's the, the movement, the shape is exactly the same. When we go into levers, all of this is going to be the same, we're just going to change where our arms are. So this is like the, the core work of the foundation, but it works perfectly great for handstands, it transfers then into everything else we do. Well, right, last one, we're going to give you a quick demo of an exercise, which you can have a go at if you want, if you feel comfortable just to see, because what it will do is give you some feedback as to where you're struggling. So your first thing is we can do is go back into our push-up position. <coughs> what I don't want to do is advocate push-ups in hollow body position, so we don't always need to be like in this shape. I want to be able to, if I want to go perfect push up, I want to go neutral, and then I can push up. But for the purposes of handstand training, I'm going to adjust that pattern slightly. So I'm going to go push up position, create a hollow body, and I'm going to walk the hands out and see if I can hold this shape. The stronger that I am, the lower I'm going to be able to get. Yeah, so it's, it's the movement, as you got the range of the shoulders to go there, and then the strength for that end range. So exactly what we were talking about yesterday. Did you get that? <laughs> yeah, so if we're tight at the shoulder, it'll be hard to get there. We're weakest at end range, but we're working. The, the load, if you talk about load or the resistance okay. we're having to work, everything we've done so far for the core was unloaded. You were resting on the floor. Whereas now we're challenging the core but loaded, and particularly loaded around the shoulders. Tim goes through that leg, it's hard to find hard for the shoulders. Yeah. yeah. So then, Greg? Greg doesn't know what he's doing, don't worry. He's doing the hard work. So if Tim goes into his handstand shape, and he's, he's got um, that core strong and connected, if we take the hardest point, the furthest, so here's his fixed point on the floor, his pivot point. Yeah, we go the end of the, is he gonna help me? Yeah. We go the end of his lever, if he maintains that body position, we can pick when him up. Ready. <laughs> when, he's, when he's ready, when he's locked in, we can pick him up. Oh. Oh. You right? I need to find the right hand minute. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Big two. One. Big kids. Oh, I'm not so bad. Boy, he likes it if you clap him. Yeah. Yeah. The hardest bit about that is connecting from the bottom because they want to lift me, so I have to. It's finding the lever position. Are you going from a <coughs> resting position on the floor to suddenly the hardest part? Oh, that, 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 that,
Um, so let's have a go. Let's all have a go. Go to that pressure position. Create that hollow position. So you're going to tuck your belt a little bit. Don't go crazy. I don't want to, I don't want to go from here and just like... Yeah, so it's, it's a subtle movement. And then what is it like? I just slide those hands. I mean, this grass is pretty good for it. You'll feel a point, guys, and you lose a spine. So don't allow yourself to go into that, that uh, extended position. Go as far as you can go whilst keeping hollow body. And that's your point where you want to stay. The midsection is where, is where a large portion of transferring force to the body. So the stronger we are. Take your with you. Bring this as high up, and let it come down. Your hips are down, uh, so your shoulders are down there somewhere. Let's so come up one last last little thing on this. What can be nice to do if you want to go into some like press work and whatnot, your hamstring length is going to be um, important for that. So you can walk your hands out, sniff the floor, and then you're going to walk your feet forward, and then can you get to a position that is very good. Yeah, that's the start of your um, like press type position. Like Darren, so Darren six months ago couldn't touch his toes. When I played rugby, I put my hamstrings many times, got hamstring problems. I as well, I've got a picture, on my, I will put it up later, I've got a picture on my phone of Darren last year. That's as far as we can go. Show us that. And I was a similar thing. <laughs> now, this is the bike. <laughs> <laughs> that was even no way more than <laughs> Yeah, so have, have a go. When you're there, the further forward you go, we're then all, we're going into, you know the one that, uh, the down dog that Tim did, you're starting to go towards that position. You're going to start to let your head go through. Nice idea, let your head go through. Loads of right. Yeah, there you go, loads of the shoulder. The head's up, head through. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you like the start of your press, if you're, yeah. if you're here and staying yeah. there, you can't load up, you, we need to load, we need to get under. Yeah. You need to get your head underneath and stuff stacking on top as early as possible. If you're looking forward, yeah. you're not I stacking always there. have necking. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. yeah, when you step forward, yeah. you're crushing the... Yeah. 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 But you've got the range. They do you a lot, yeah. You've got the range like you. When I come back, it's all straight stuff. When you yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to straight go back. Yeah. So that's a little bit there. Yeah. So that, that comes to the. I've got my safety in already. My feet back. Can I bend the other way? Yeah. Um, or can I go. So I use this quite a lot. Just to go and find the range of movement again, you've got to stretch because you're now going from. That's a way to to get back on the yeah, more flexion. stretch. Can you make it again? Okay. This is an exercise to you. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't have sought because this is. But this is still. still how can you get? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's going higher. Yeah. Yeah. Go on, keep bringing your feet. Keep bringing your feet. Good. So let's say that. So there, you're just a little bit past vertical. It's fine. And then if you want to, we need to get this like more over here. So you will have to keep. Keep going up onto your tiptoe. And it's going to be this and this, 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 this that way and this up. And it's just that way. Can you then get into that position and actually take it? Where your handstand practice can go, then, and then particularly like this bit, you've done that um, caterpillar walk into that position now, and it goes to show in that position there. If you find that it's hard to get higher, so it's that hamstring range, but it's also, it could be whether I'm stiff in that low back position. So can I get hamstring range or is my back tight? And then we just need to find these positions which are going to help to mobilise a shape that I can't get into, which could be that flexion. <coughs> I'm just going to go from like a straight leg press into a pike to handstand. So we can take that caterpillar position and I'm just now going to lift my body up. But what I want you to just think about is one of the control strategies that we have is this end range in a handstand. So this is kind of like a, a fairly advanced progression of that. But the point I want to illustrate is that you're using your shoulders to control your hip position. So if I walk myself into shape here, I go hands on the floor, I can come through and balance. And as that's lift, but then to get into the shape, my shoulders are pushing into the floor to bring myself that head between, trying to make that straight shape. Now I'm locking the hollow body. So then the alignment is, Everything's stacked on top of one another, 
But if you go to the start, because it doesn't need any counterbalance. If you go, go back to the start position, at the start, we had a quick extra command here. At the start position, you don't have to go through the whole thing, but just the start <laughs> position. If he's going to count, if this is his pivot point, and this, 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 he needs to counterbalance this. So at that point, his, his uh, arm isn't vertical. It has to go slightly forward. So the shoulders will be slightly in front of the, the hands on the floor. So the wrist range becomes, you need more important to counterbalance the weight of his legs and everything, even if they're skinny like ours. <laughs> they still got to counterbalance that weight. And then as we come up, if you saw it from the side, the, the arm went from a position here to, to starts to straighten up as the body comes on top of it. So it's going from there to there. Yeah? And basically connecting these two structures together. That's where that midsection alignment is. So we finish here at 11. If you can't do that by 11, <laughs> 1,000 per piece. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get you guys on your hands a little bit. So we're at my bear, we're at Mike's gym. We're in the temple and doing our uh, first handstand session with the guys. We've done some prep work, we've worked on the court, and Tim is now just starting to take the guys through their first journey of using these puppies, like their feet, to balance on their hands. So we're going to try and loosen this stuff off. If we have any kind of golfer's elbow or um, elbow pain, this is one for us. <coughs> these are our forearm flexes. <coughs> when we do um, lots of pull-up work, when we are weak at end range, we want to find that bit of the chin over the bar. So we find it here, and then that's why we get all jumped up and nasty in here. So spending time loosening these guys out, have a go on both sides. It's good for us. Some small wrist circles, and then just control them. Another one we can go is palms together, elbows high. Press out, try and keep the palms together. Roll a little bit in those positions. Keep in mind, no one in our gym was doing calisthenics. We were just messing about. But at that point, it was like, I was just trying to do this stuff. It was, was going to be more fun than weights. And we were just playing about. Was, there was no like, Oh, and then we'll get good, and then we'll teach it. There's none of that. Because <laughs> um, we still haven't got good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, that is that is where it started. Yeah, I can. I don't know if you got any of those. Old, you got some old videos somewhere of. Oh, they're all embarrassing. Took my out. But you watch. You watched. Well, we went to um, get some tips from um, a, a, a gymnastics. Yeah. Um, is it Olympic gymnast um, that's in Nottingham? And Tim did his straddle up, and he he went. Like people come in now at day whatever four and a half years is and they go oh these i couldn't do that because i'm not like tim but actually if you'd seen him at the beginning he was just like you are now i've never been able to do one even though i did gymnastics as a kid and i only learned to do one about six weeks ago and within minutes they got us all doing a test to see who could start as actually like do a yeah. minute and it, it was just so quick to learn it, even though I'd never done one before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I tried, but I, I was always scared of face planting. Yeah, yeah. That, that position phase was real yeah. quick to start off with. Okay, that's a little bit, and then we're, I'm going to just move to the open floor to touch. If you guys, so I'm going to show you two variations of how I can get you well, I'm going to show you a few variations of how I can get into handstand. If I just want to go into a handstand and nail that shape, then I need straight arm strength. Two different things. So it could be that I start straight arms. And I'm just going to bunny hop up, try and hold that shape, and then press out. Or we might want to just kind of stand up. Same thing, I'm going to try and kick up, and then align the base over the top. I think the kick up, personally, for me, is harder. Because you've got so many hit and miss opportunities. I have to control a tidal wave of information in a split second. Because I haven't got any stable components. What we like about the, the frog stand progression, or the, or the straight arm progression, is that I can create a stable foundation from which I can move to the next progression. So if I go straight arm, straight arm position, knees go higher, all that happens is I'm just gonna go here. If I can control that shape, it's a stable foundation. It means I can then start to think about the next one. So I'm building a complex movement by layering bits that I can do, rather than trying to kick up and guess at all the big bits that I wanna do at the same time. <coughs> so, um, yeah, so, so, go, so go to your stable, the high knee, stable shape. So, 
He's stable here, and then he takes both legs off, he keeps his hips high, and then he rotates to the neck pole. That's his neck shape. Is he strong enough to suspend his body, or suspend himself off the ground? You can skip that stage by getting strong in the crow stand, and, just and then working to get stable here. The bit of like that rotation is, is like, it's a lot of strength to move that through. But it depends what you want to do. It's the idea efficient. of breaking it down rather than go everything at once. It's going basically shoulders and hips, then legs, rather than shoulders hips and legs. But there's not, there's not. You can still we we can kick up, we can kick up slower and find our shape. Yeah, rather than a big fast like the big fast kick up is what that's the one that's likely to send you over the top. So whenever we're trying to do something. If we've got more control as we're moving in and out of our positions, then we're going to have more chance of holding, um, holding that balance. Okay. So, so to for this one, one. Yeah. 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 So yeah. 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 knees higher, yeah. yeah. lean into it, yeah. same thing. Yeah. 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 That's it. That's it. So all you, so all you didn't do was just you didn't you pivot your balance slightly further forward. You got to it's the same as you know that question you asked me about. Yeah. You lean forward for your start of your press. Yeah. It's exactly the same. So I just commit more. Yeah. yeah. The question that I use actually is just that, getting used to it and building up the reps. Oh, I can't do it. Just have to do it a long time. Guys, so just just have a, just have a look, guys and girls. Um, questions for like thinking about where where you're going and there were some questions about like that sort of straight arm press position and we've seen Tim do it from a pipe. People do it where you straddle out to the side and come up, but that idea being um, that the shoulder needs to go forward of um, forward of the, the wrist to counterbalance the weight behind you. Yeah, in your frog, because your arms are bent, you've not got to lean as far forward because everything's a bit tighter. And that bent position, you're able to let bicep and tricep help the shoulders out. Whereas in that straight position we've got to, um, the shoulders are going to have to do it a lot more. And I'm having to commit to being further forward. Yeah. yeah, so the same way if someone's doing a frog for the first time, I would always suggest to them, right, don't just try and jump up because you'll smash your head on the floor like me, or you just won't commit to the balance <coughs> point, which is further forward than you think. <coughs> but your brain is saying, Jacko, you're 36, you've got a beautiful face, you don't want to mess up. <laughs> It's happened. I've had a carpet burn off this before. That's another funny photo. Um, so, if I was frog standing, it would be get comfortable right onto your tiptoes, squeeze the floor, feel the floor, push down hard, push those scaps, all of that good stuff, and then one. Right, am I happy? Can I, can I dab that one? Okay, yeah, I think, right, I've got the balance point. So, the same thing, but I need to be higher, arms are straight, gripping the floor, pushing down hard. That feels, that feels like, that feels fine. I oh, know it's not, look. So a bit further. Okay, that feels like it. One leg. Okay. Yeah, now I've got it. So build it up slowly. That pivot, that, that balance point is further forward, further forward than you think. Yeah? Is that good? Yeah. 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 There you go, 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 there you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> It's different. I feel a lot, a lot of stress here. Yeah, so we get yeah. Because rotation at the same time. You have to get all that strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The range is there. So it's almost like you keep your arms straight. Now, thumbs up. If you push, get anyone else feeling it with that straight arm variation, because of the need to get that shoulder further yeah. forward, the wrist feels tighter. Yeah. 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 The other, put it back on. Can we take both off and keep the hips at the same height? And then we've got the same variation. We've got the same thing if you want to try that um, with a straight arm position. So that's going to be some of our strength and trying to move about and just trying to feel challenge, challenge your balance, but challenge your strength in terms of that. If you if you wanted some bridging gaps, I could be. I'm going to dab one toe on the floor just to give myself a tiny bit of support as I practice taking one leg off before I actually can do it completely on my own. Yeah, have a feel of whether you want to do that bent, whether you want to try that straight, depending on what you want to try and do. Have a, have a go at both. Um, as in off, 
uh, you were running up to like yeah, into, into like the tuck. So right, so we can so tucking wise, we can bent arm, take both off, and that press out. We've got that straight arm position to it. Where our other option is, can I actually do a little kick up and try and find that position? I'm just getting that might be at the start. It might be thinking again, bent arm, a little bit easier than straight, so it might be that I get used to just being slightly there, because then you can worry about pushing up to it afterwards, or if you just get a boom straight, I'm just trying to, it might be a little nudge, but can we start to feel what it's like up in that position? Yeah, one thing, and then we'll worry about the legs being completely straight once we get those positions out there. Okay. There's loads of little bits of help we can give you while we're working with help and some things around that. I have a little, have a little play around of all those, the variety of those things you want to have a go at. Ask any questions. Walk around and help everybody. I'm struggling to keep my scalp set. I know I am. Yeah, yeah. I'm sinking down all the time. Yeah. So yeah. Go into it. Yeah. Enjoy. Do what you need to do. That's fine. You feel where that hip position needs to hold. <coughs> but like you say, if you, I think one of the things that I find is that you're going to go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah. Okay. I thought you were just going to do one. Go, come back I'm then. sorry. Don't you think I've been supported in the same? It's not like, um, so just just take one knee up. Ta oh, sorry. So just take one knee up. Okay. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do this. Which, which side are you going to do? I'll do this one. This one. All right. right. So I'm even going to do it. I'm not even going to touch with that side. That hand. Okay. Keep it safe. Rather than, and it's, if you extend the lever out, Harder or easier? It's easier because you pull up my balance, not my balance. It's balance point because of the weight balance, is pulling yeah. you down. So strength point of view, it's hard. Yeah. 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 But in terms of, say you've got a portion of your program which is, <laughs> is focused on um, skill acquisition and handstand, I want you to move that to just a direct route, straight arm, and I want hold that shape. So that's not my thing. Instead of having a program, that's my skill acquisition. Tim mentioned about using a band later, and we're going to, the same principle of where we're going to support is going to happen. We've got some people where their reflex is, the legs shooting out behind them, and that's then causing that. Weight distribution for balance may be easier, but you've got to shift something forward if your legs are going back. The weight of that's being pulled down, and it's going to pull us down to the ground. So we're going to try and keep the knee in tight. Just one knee, yeah? And all I'm going to do is nothing hard, just a tiny bit of support. She takes it off and bring it to that side, not shooting it out by your chest, by your chest. There you go, and then put it back on. Good, and then come back down. Yeah? If there isn't that support there, you've got two options. Face plan, because you're not strong enough, or your brain goes the safe option, rock back. Don't commit to the, to the balance point of those hips stacked on top of your base support. Yeah, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, I want to do, have you? We also haven't, we don't know what we're doing. Um, so if you were doing some like kick-ups, if we were going to get some support, and some of the lads were doing this as well, I might try this with you, where you're trying to get into that position, yeah? But every time, I did, some of might have done, but the WWF body slam over the top, the brain doesn't like that. So where do we go? We go here, it's safe. But we're never getting the hit on top of the base of support. That is balance. Not a hand, what I'm going to like, base, uh, the, the center mass will be base of support. That's the, the principle of balance. So if you've got hands on the floor, and I can support her hips, and you're just going to come into this tuck position. So your legs aren't going to be straight, legs are going to be bent. Okay? So little, little bunny help, yeah? Little bunny help. I help her get her hips above her base of support. Yeah? And just one, one of the reasons is, Andy, come. One of the reasons is, Give the brain, so I've been watching some of Andy's, I might not see them all, but he was never getting his hips above his base of support, so he was always going down. I'm going to give his brain the chance to go, okay, this is the position, because he hasn't yet felt that position. So if you, if you do exactly what you did, I'm just going to help you come a little bit further. Okay, stay there, stay there, stay there, stay there. Oh, yeah, nice. see? Nice. <laughs> 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 so it's not like so that now that couldn't have gone any better because I felt I was like oh, I'm a magic man like it's not magic it, it's literally is that was I right you didn't nail one before no just yeah so he just wasn't getting 
his um, centre of mass pips above his base of support. And then all of a sudden we did, and I didn't actually think he would necessarily hold the balance, I don't know how much handsome training he's done, but he was fine, I could feel he was fine. And then he actually fucking nailed it. But is that was all we did was, it happened quicker than Aidan thought, we gave his brain the chance to go, oh here's the position, great, got it. Say he just didn't have the balance, he's obviously done some handsoming work. We'd have got him there, I'd have gone, oh he wouldn't have felt great, I probably wouldn't have let go of it. And if I had let go of it, he'd have fallen some way. But he had some, you've been doing some handstand practice? A little bit, yeah. A little bit, yeah. So <coughs> he's, got, he's got some experience of that being upside down. He just couldn't find that shape from that sort of position. Yeah? Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 Okay, so I'm just going to squat here a tiny little bit. Put knee off, keep it tight. So chest, knee, no, knee, chest, knee, chest, knee, chest. Good, and then put it back. There you go. Put it back. Put it back. the alignment's pretty good, right? Like yeah. it's not far off at all. But your brain is like, I've got no idea where I am. Yeah. Which is I don't, fine, I don't like glutes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So what your job is then... upside down, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a development of your kinesthetic awareness of spending more time in those shapes. And when we use the wall in a minute, you're going to get some feedback to the wall straight. So if you can get into that shape, and you've got to spend time there, give your brain a chance to go, I understand now where I am in space, but when I'm upside down. If you have the same thing if you were, like from a physio perspective, People had a shoulder injury, the proprioception of actually, when I've yeah. dislocated my shoulders, come out, had a surgery, I all of a sudden just don't really know where this is anymore. So I've got to retrain where I am in space. And that's why we do all these like little silly exercises and never wear it for me. On top of the shoulders, rather than when both legs go, all the momentum's going that way, it's very hard for you to stop yourself from not going that way. And you end up in that, everything's, going, everything's sending you into that arch. Everything's sending you feel the top. See what happens. Take both at the same time. It's really difficult to stop because you're just sending loads of momentum up overhead. When you feel when you feel like things are going over the top, gripping with your fingers and it's pulling with them is what's going to help you pull yourself back. If you are standing up now, if I lean forward, automatically my toes try and grip to pull me back. And your fingers are going to do the same thing. Okay. Have a play with that, guys. We, you've noticed if you've said like what we say, we use that. Phrase fairly intentional. Have a play. We are, I love writing um, in general, but I've got to put some blogs together about play. We do it as kids, and it's how we learn about the environment around us. It's about how we learn about our bodies. We try things. Um, when we get become adults, we lose that freedom of play. Einstein said, "Play is the greatest form of research." So play with the movement. Work out what works. Work out what doesn't. I'm watching Jack. I'm, I'm absolutely love every moment of watching Jack learn to move because he just plays and he tries something it doesn't work and if it doesn't work he tries it it doesn't work and he realizes after a bit it doesn't work so I'm going to try something else but at the moment you guys and it's, it's not a fault and it's not a criticism but people go tell me what I need to do and I can tell you what the tools are and the, the points but there's also a bit of you've just got to understand how you how am I moving and what is working and what isn't because you've got to get in tune with your own bodies to understand control so it's a beautiful, handstanding is actually a really nice mindfulness um, experience and practice. We talk, like Jacko was talking about, he's on his salt course yesterday, he couldn't think about anything else because he was scared for his life. <laughs> <laughs> it was, but it was really good, I remember halfway through, for some reason I got out of that and I was like, and most I imagine most people in here have been thinking about handstands for the last hour and a bit. But when you're upside down, just, what am I doing? Because that's what your body is when you're, when now when you're standing, you've been doing it for 37 years, like I don't need to think about standing up. When I'm upside down, I need to be thinking about how am I doing this movement? Does that make sense? So have a play. It's, it's a great little thing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, what are you going to say? It's a play session. I don't know. And play with some stuff and see what happens. And see what I learn as a result of it. Do some research on yourself.